Um, a few. I said, very, but I don't see anything in Vancouver. I take the challenge this week and try to explain why Robson Square has no square to a British <laughs> audience and why it's a wonderful piece of urban design and urban space making, but it has no square in that sense. And every time I tour people, they ask me, where's the square? Now that you've shown me the provincial building, the law courts, where is Robson Square? So, so it's interesting. Now, um, my real comment to you is that I think this Vancouver uh, Toronto dialogue is very rare. And, and thanks for coming. It's great to have you here. And great actually to sit down and look, and look at this. Um, Please get something from your prefatory comments, you know, coming here and, and liking their vitality and the thin towers and so on. Um, and then seeing the KBMP projects, the ballet school and so on, um, and the kind of crispness and quietness, et cetera, and the tronticity of that work. Uh, and here I like, what's the tronticity? Oh, the tronticity. <laughs> well, there's Vancouverism and tronticity. No, <laughs> tronticity. <laughs> Not tronticity, sorry. Be <laughs> yeah. careful. No. Yeah, you're Calvinist. Um, I'm not Calvinist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here, here's my reiteration of half of your ideas and half of mine. Okay, if you look at that KDMP work, okay, Toronto tries and succeeds in getting urbanism out of architecture. Tries and succeeds in getting urbanism out of architecture. Vancouver tries and fails in getting architecture out of urbanism. In other words, we have the planners will tell you this end tower on that townhouse space, give us the New York brownstones, uh, Mr. Architect put a chateau, chapeau on top of that roof, art deco, this and that. We've had enormous design powers by our planners. And the notion is from that kind of urbanism, architecture results and it hasn't. And ironically, your slides to me tonight prove that maybe only a few firms, like KBP and a few others, but they're getting, you know, they're getting their urbanism out of architecture. So I just wonder if you could take that away. Well, that's a really neat way of putting it. Um, but you know, um, when I wander around Yale Town, I hope it's not I hope it's too sound too much like a tourist here, and Cold Harbor, and those places. I am struck by how well they work. I mean, I don't know if I want to live there. I, I don't know them well enough to say that. But I mean, I, I walked down Cole, um, Cole Harbor yesterday with our harbor front, our waterfront in mind. And I have to say to you, honestly, Trevor, I think if we did half as well, if we got it even half as right as that, I would be thrilled. And. And I don't know that we will. And I, and, I, and I think there are probably lots of things that could be improved and this and that. And maybe the architecture isn't, um, I don't know. But as I say, the more I do this, the more I begin to realize that, that architecture is really um, the icing. Uh, but the city can, a, city, uh, a city with bad architecture can still be a great city, but a city with bad planning would find it very hard to be. Uh, I mean, I think you could probably find um, more examples of great architecture, or at least very good architecture in Toronto, than you could in Vancouver, to be really blunt about it. But I don't think it adds up. And this is what I keep on saying. I think there are a few places where it does. But, you know, it's, just, it's always the exception. And, and I think that that's the great insight that, that Vancouver seems to have understood. And it, you know, it seems to me that you know the, the developers here have to make provisions for the public realm. They have to give money for subsidized housing, schools, sidewalks. Um, I mean, there are firms that development firms that work here and in Toronto. And I think that they do better work here than they have there. And I think rules, generally speaking, are good if they're the if they're the right rules. And I and I just think that uh, as much as one could, I mean, I read your story about the building with the flat roof and how nice it was to have a, a building west of or the east of Canby that has a flat roof, not a pitched roof. I mean, you know, that's the kind of story that that you kind of debate that you only have in a city that is pretty sure of, of you know, who it is and what is appropriate for it. And in other words, that's a debate that would never happen in Toronto. Like, we're so far away from that. 
On the other hand, I'm still waiting to see what Vancouver's uh, answer to the Geary, the Liebestein, the, the KPMB, all those questions is going to be. Because I see this is a dimension of life that doesn't seem to have achieved as much expression here as it has in Toronto. Well, I think we're curious too, and we are a, 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 a verge of something. We may well blow it, as Toronto has. I think those buildings are all, all of them, except for uh, I think the I think the will also, the leaves can, all of them have a pox upon them, except for, no, of course they take step for the course. Of, but, but the real point I want to make is back to this validating architecture question. Right. If you look at the Governor General's awards, this cycle that just came out, uh, half six of the trials are Toronto architects for Toronto projects, and that's you know that's great, and that's national values. Who knows? Oh, there's Stephen Teeple, there's Stephen Teeple's church. But what I'm what I'm saying though is that oh, half normally this is Vancouver we get, we get half the awards, and you guys get the scraps. And I think there's a signal in that because you are doing. Some architectural things, right? Yeah. Um, and and uh, interestingly, Vancouver got three or four awards, two by the PACO, Bruce Goddard and Ward, um, and the only urban one, you know, the only one that kind of fit into the notion of Vancouver as this urbanist paradise was Oliver Lyon's Roar project on West 10th, which I urge you to see. But I want to put this back to you then. We have a national awards program for architecture, which seems uh, um, again, to not validate good urban gestures uh, is not quite enough. So I don't know if that's. Uh, let me give you the same way. Let me give you the example you, you brought it up of Stephen Teeple's Scarborough Chinese Baptist Church, which I have visited, and it's an extraordinary piece of sculpture built uh, clad in titanium, a remarkable piece of architecture. On one side, you have an empty lot. On the other side, you have, I think it's an empty lot. On that side, you have, uh, I can't even remember. It's at the north end of, of uh, I think it's actually in the city of Toronto. It is in the city of Toronto, but it's in Scarborough. And I, we don't need to get into the details of Scarborough. But the point being that, you know, this is what I'm talking about. Yes, it's a great piece of architecture, and I can understand why it won an award, um, but it's apropos of nothing. You know, it's, it's, it, there's no context, there's no there, there, when you get there, except this thing. And even it has to be surrounded by a 300 par, 300 car parking garage, because there's no other way to get there. And so, in, in a way, I think to myself, well, yeah, it's great, it's fantastic. Um, but, I, I, in a way, it's, it, it's, it's <coughs> you know, as I say, I, well, nothing, because what do you do? I mean, so you've got this great thing um, in the middle of nowhere. Um, set back uh, from the street, and uh, I don't know. I mean, I can understand why I got an award, and I respect it, and I think Stephen Teeple is a great architect, blah, blah, blah. But I think that these projects are much more important because they're, they are actually helping, and I think the condos here, they're, they're part of something. And they're aware of that, and they're trying to do something. And I think that's to me a lot more interesting. That's why, I, quite frankly, I, I, I don't even write about the Gardner General's Wars. I, frankly, it, it doesn't mean that much to me. I mean, I think that they're all thrilled to win. I mean, I would be if I won an award too. But it just doesn't mean anything. I mean, I, it just doesn't mean anything. And, and, and uh, Stephen Teeple is very good at those kinds of projects out in the middle of nowhere, where you can kind of. You know, they attract your attention as you drive by at 120 kilometers an hour.